Here then we can see the wireless trainer in operation. Everything working as it should. I turn the trainer mode off and control returns to the master radio. All is working as it should and completely wireless. How fantastic is that? There are a few pitfalls to be aware of. First, I will show you how to set up the TX16S as the master, and after that, as I have it here, with the Radio Master Pocket as the master. Let's go. I have set up trainer connections in the past, and without exception, it's been a very painful and messy experience. Every manufacturer of transmitters has a different cable specification, different types of plugs. Therefore, even the thought of connecting, say, a Futaba to an FR Sky is a complete anathema. Even between the same manufacturers, it can be a nightmare as well. Some transmitters having the equivalent of audio stereo jacks, some being mono jacks, and others being just completely bizarre designs that no other manufacturer is going to use. The way forward then is to use a small wireless receiver and connect that to our transmitter's trainer function. That's what we'll be covering in this video. For the TX16S and the Pocket, I'm going to be using ELRS receivers. I like these a lot, not only because they are so tiny, this one being a Beta FPV Nano, and in the pocket I have a similarly sized Happy Model EP2 that has a ceramic antenna instead of this one. Temporarily I've just put on some little connectors so that I can plug into the AUX port on the Radio Master. The AUX port that we're going to be using is AUX1, which is on the bottom underneath this rubber cover, and it's clearly marked with the plus 5 transmit and receive. Now, clearly, the transmit from the receiver is going to go to the receive on here, and that's all that we need to connect. I'll go ahead and do that now. It is very important to note at this point that although I should be mentioning SBUS throughout this video, what it actually needs to be is inverted SBUS. Looking here at the web UI screenshot for the Beta FPV receiver, we can see that in the serial protocol it's set to inverted SBUS. That's what you must have for this to work. Here we can see where I've just pushed my connectors in, insulating them a little. Ground plus five and the transmit on the receiver going to the receive pin here. Obviously this is not a permanent ar arrangement, it's only for demonstration purposes. If I were going to mod this radio, I would put the receiver inside the case and solder the wires onto the back of that connector. Turning the radio on now then. You may have noticed that the light blinked briefly and then went out. That is because on the TX16S radios in the system menu, if we go across to the hardware tab and scroll down, we can see that AUX1 and AUX2 have the port power function, which is currently off. In this menu then we can see that the AUX port is set to SBUS Trainer. And if we power on, then we can see our light trying to bind, but I don't have the other transmitter on at the moment. We'll just turn that off. That's what we need to set the AUX port as. Coming out of that menu then, on a per model basis, we scroll down in our model setup, and we can see at the bottom here, I'm using an external RF module for my ELRS, but what we're interested at the moment is the trainer function. 
which is set to master jack at the moment. What we want to set that to is master serial. Serial being the SBUS signal from the AUX port. Just showing you in the channels monitor then, it's a very basic setup for my Bixilla radio. The other thing that we need to do on the model is to assign a special function for the trainer to a switch. We'll pick a clear special function and for the switch assignment we'll use SF which is conveniently located here. So let's say that in the up position that will be the trainer enabled. In the function then we select trainer and the value you can choose just the sticks, just a particular channel or all channels. For this demonstration I should be selecting just the sticks and we need to enable it. There we can see it then activated when we put it into the up position. Another thing which should be useful in the up position we also it will be neat to play a track. That will be the value trainer on and only one time. Trainer. Also then it will be nice to have a trainer off. Trainer. Trainer. There we have it then, our voice announcements and our trainer enable. In the next section we'll see how we actually use it. To see everything in action, just a quick note before we do that. As mentioned before, I'm using ELRS receiver here and both radios are running ELRS. There are some who are accustomed to be using the same binding phrase for all their equipment and all their receivers and, and transmitters. That is going to cause a problem in this particular setup. We don't want the internal module of the Radio Master TX16S connecting to the receiver, which it would do if it had the same binding phrase. Therefore, make sure that your slave radio has a different binding phrase and the receiver has the same binding phrase before we get started. I hope that's clear. With the slave radio on, then we go into our SIS and hardware and enable the power to the receiver and we heard there simultaneously that um, the pocket has connected to the receiver and trainer mode has been activated. If we now look at the channels monitor, at the moment our master is in charge all functioning as it should there and clearly if we move the sticks on the slave radio nothing happens. Flicking our switch then we get our announcement our master radio is now disabled and control has been passed to the slave. It's worth noting here that you can set different rates on the slave radio when somebody is learning, the usual thing is to over control the model. You may wish to dial the rates down and dial the expo up. And when you need control back, if we throttle right up and heave over on the rudder, all we have to do is to disable the trainer function and the master is back in control. Excellent. In the next part then we'll reverse the procedure and make the pocket the master and the TX-16 the slave. Turning our attention to the pocket radio then, we need to get inside to find the AUX port. First removing my iRange X, ELRS inside and the 4-in-1 module uh, unbeatable combo undoing the rubber grips and of course removing the batteries. You will need a 2mm hex driver to remove the four screws 
which are located here on each side. With the screws undone, we can carefully, because there is a cable attached, just move the back cover out of the way. We can see here that I've already modded this radio. You will need to find yourself a five-way connector that'll fit into this header here. Now, having messed around with FPV and flight controllers, GPSs, etc. for many years, I found this connector in my bag because I never throw anything away that I'd removed, I believe, from a, a GPS unit. Therefore, I have just repurposed that. Here is the little EP2 receiver that I've hot melt glued to the side of the transmitter there. A very simple setup. One thing that the pocket radio does not have is the ability to switch the power to this on and off, unlike on the TX16S. Now, it's not a big deal for this to be powered all the time. However, I think in the long term, what I would do would be to put a little switch in line with the power lead to enable me to switch that on and off, but uh, no big deal. That then is how we connect the receiver to the pocket radio. Having installed our receiver, the other transmitter not being on, so it's gone into its Wi-Fi mode. Let's look at the setup on the Pocket, which, no surprise, is the same as on the TX16S. Firstly, then, going into the System and the Hardware tab, we can see that AUX1 needs to be set again to SBUS Trainer. There being, as I said before, no control over the power. Coming out of there then, the other settings were in the Models tab. Looking at the model setup, we go and set the trainer mode to Master Serial. Remember that that maps the signal from the AUX port to the trainer function. Once again, the other thing that I've set up is a special function on switch A this time, which is this switch here. When the switch A is depressed, as you heard there, the little light comes on and it announces the trainer function. Trainer off, trainer on. The trainer function set there, and once again, we're mapping the channels through. And don't forget to put the tick in the box to enable it. With our slave transmitter turned on then, when we power up the pocket, you should see the TX16S bind with the receiver in here. Once again, the binding phrase is different on here than it is to the pocket. We don't want the pocket to automatically connect. We can see then that that has bound. And I just happen to have the receive quality on the screen there. We look at the channel's monitor on both devices. Trainer off. You should see there the master pocket is running and there is no input from the slave. Pushing our SA switch down then. Trainer on. Control has been passed to the slave radio. Trainer off. And so there we have it then. I hope you found the video useful in clarifying how we can use a wireless connection in the trainer mode utilizing the power of Edge TX and ELRS, an unbeatable combo. Many thanks for watching.